Hello, this is New Vision TV. I am Lynn Komjisha. Rising prices and shortage of sugar occupy an unpleasant place in Uganda's economic history, having symbolized the disastrous economic war of the 70s decade. The phenomenon has been gone for nearly four decades, and now New Vision TV examines its resurgence. Last week, Trade Minister Amelia Chambade fixed the minimum price for a kilo of sugar at 5,000 shillings. But because of the entrenched free market economy, not many people paid attention to her directive. We shall continue as a ministry to monitor sugar supply stocks from millers, distributors and retailers to ensure that the retail price of sugar does not exceed 5,000 per kilogram. 5,000 shillings. This takes effect from, from, from actually today, Piers. Yes. It takes effect from today. It's immediate. Immediate. It takes effect from today. In fact, our, our food, soldier, food soldiers are already in, in uh, moving. Sugar now retails at 7,000 shillings a kilo in some places and 5,500 shillings in big supermarkets. Average price around the economy seems to be 6,000 shillings a kilo. So what really happened? The main cause for the drop in sugar output at the factories is the prolonged drought that hit the country for several months. Many sugarcane growers found themselves getting as little as half a tonnage per acre than what they used to get. Some big plantation owners simply suspended supply to the factories and waited for the rain to help add some weight top their cane. As if the failing tonnage due to drought was not bad enough, many farms caught fire as the fire hazard during the drought increased. Burnt cane can only be accepted by the millers if it was at least nine months old and is delivered within 84 hours after the fire. With drought and fires cutting the cane supply from the sugarcane zone around Buyukwe and Busoga, millers in the area started sending trucks as far as Masindi to buy cane, severely competing with Chinyara Sugar Company for outgrower supply. Naturally, the price of cane has been rising as the millers compete with the scarce cane. By Easter time, all millers were paying at least 150,000 shillings per ton of cane, up from 120,000 shillings as per the same time last year. Last week, GM Uganda Sugar Factory on Ginger Road sent out messages to outgrowers informing them that it is now paying 170,000 shillings per ton. GM hardly has any cane plantation and possesses a big head to Uganda Sugar Corporation of Lugazi. The same way, Mayugi and Kalilo cause Kakira sugar discomfort. So with the improved rains, the millers expect normal supply of sugar cane from the outgrowers. To, and we think that this will result in increased sugar production. Officially, the other explanation for the shortage and high prices is the annual closure of meals for maintenance work, which lasts about a month. But this is not very convincing considering that it occurs every year and has not been causing such price hikes in the past. And in any case, the big mill is no longer entirely closed down as they have more than one line, one for their own cane and the other for the outgrowers. And these are maintained at different times. They have actually resumed normal production from 12th May today. Instead of going for maintenance, they were going to close for maintenance. You had started, hadn't you? Yeah, we started last week. They started, yes. But now that has also affected the supply of sugar. So now they have resumed production. Their growing exports to Kenya have also been blamed to an extent for the shortage and the rising prices. Whatever the case, sugar supply is likely to stabilize following the heavy rains which are doing the cane in the gardens a lot of good. Besides, more acreage is being opened up for the cane as more people join the business.
You're still watching New Vision TV and now for Pearl of Africa series we take a look at Lake Victoria. It is the largest water body in East Africa. Lake Victoria is named after Queen Victoria by John Speak, an explorer in the 1850s in his quest to locate the source of the river Nile. The lake provides numerous activities such as fishing, boat riding, among so very many others. Let's take a look. Lake Victoria is the largest freshwater lake in Africa and fourth largest in the world after Caspian Sea, Lake Michigan and Lake Superior. The Lake Victoria covers a surface area of about 26,564 square miles. It straddles in three countries of East Africa with the largest part drawn in Tanzania. This lake was named after Queen Victoria by a British explorer, John Hannington Speak, in 1858. Primarily, it receives its water from rainfall and thousands of small streams. The Kagela River flows into Victoria. It has over 100 islands, some of them measuring a little less than an acre. Ukelewe is the largest island on Lake Victoria and the largest inland island in Africa with an area of approximately 530 kilometers. And that's all we had for you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch more of your updates on your mobile, on your desktop, on your tablet, anywhere on the go by visiting www.newvision.co.ug. I am Lynn Komjisha.